having a placement with a foster child or adopting child, when that, fo that foster child into your home and you get that call, you want to ask as much as possible. I'm giving y'all my experience, what I went through already through for foster care. One, ask as questions. Besides, you know before, when I told you before in my last preview videos, the name, the day of birth, color is not really should be an issue if you like a child, your same, your, the, your same skin tone or your same race or your same culture, then that's a different story. They also have problems as well. But you want to also ask if they're a runaway, they have abuse of, they're neglect. All of them questions that you really want to ask. Um, if that person that calls you do not know as much, you want to ask, can I get that caseworker at email and phone number? Because um, you want to know. And sometimes before you know, they don't know and you say yes and you find out stuff that down the line or six weeks or seven days and then you see this, but the caseworker didn't call you and let you know, um, this happened to this child or this is how her past is or didn't tell you at all and then you find out other stuff down the line while this child is into your care you have the issues and you should try to figure like why i did not get notified or why are we hiding all this issue it's more of the case workers or the social workers trying to place a child into your home because they need them to get off their caseload for right about now that's how I look at it. Only I said that is because they want to move a child out of their premises, even though there's safety issues, but into a new safety issues. That's how I look at that problem. But if you have a child that's a runaway in the past, and you went to a police station and you find out they have an issue of that, that should be a red flag right there. The only reason I said a red flag is it's because you didn't know there was a runaway in the past. You did not know that. The social worker or the caseworker did not tell you nothing about that. So you're trying to figure a lot. So when they left your house, you're trying to figure a lot what happened to them, where they be at, if they are safe, somewhere safe. They didn't call you. They didn't text you. So you've been calling them. You've been texting that child if they have a cell phone. So you're trying to figure out why, what happened to them. Hmm, five out of ten, most teenagers, foster kids want to do what they want to do, but they want to be disrespected and think they can keep coming back to you. So what do you do when you're in that situation? You email that caseworker and you let her know. Him, her, or him to let her know that you need some type of program or training also additionally, but also this child need additional programs to get whatever the issues they need they're going, on, going through. Um, also, too, it can be also if they have an eating disorder. You want to ask that question also. Ask, do they have an eating disorder? Do they have some type of problem going on? Do they have a behavior issue? Do they have personal issue going on? All that works with them before they place you in, that, in your house. You also ask them questions for you can know what's going on. Especially if you did them with teenagers. Toddlers and infants, you probably don't have to do all of this. But dealing with teenagers as a foster kids, you do. You want to ask much as much questions as possible. Don't sugarcoat anything. Be blunt as possible. Because one, this child is into your home. When you already know before you want to rules and regulation, I didn't say yell at them or talk to them like you are a sergeant. But in the same token, hey. This is what goes on. Um, two, if you're trying to get the understanding with the child by you communicating, but the child was not talking to you at all, but you want to know what's really going on. If there's something you can help with, it's something you can guide line with this child, but the child was not unsponsored. So, is a runaway. Want to be in the streets or want to be at everybody else's house? You email your case that caseworker, and you let them know. You want that child out of your out of your out of your house. 
Write 30 days letter now. Write a 30 day letter and saying that you want to remove this child out of your house. Only that because it's not unsafe, it's not surrounded with the other child. That is not right. Do you have to wait 30 days to remove a child out of your house? But and it took them eight days, four days, or 24 hours to put them into your home. You see where we're getting at with this? And the first word they say they had to find a placement now. Hmm. You already know too when I mentioned my last video for the cleaning for a child. But if a child do not want to obey by your rules or understand, think they can talk to you on a Saturday neck or talk to you any type of way, you want to remove that child also as well. You don't take any child that have a disrespect behavior unless you have that experience with that issue or that problem. So you know what the role or what path to take to understand that child. Again, having problems with a foster child that like to be a runaway. You ask yourself, you didn't know what's going on. You didn't know that they, I didn't get too much a report on this child besides what I said previously earlier in this video. Again, my name is Latanya. SMS questions as possible for your foster child. This is Latanya. Give me a thumbs up, click, subscribe, and leave a comment. I will talk to y'all later on my next video.